According to the five second rule, food that has been on the floor for five seconds or less will be uncontaminated. Go. To test the myth, Adam and Jamie have placed bacteria contact plates on different parts of M5's floor for five seconds apiece. Five. The plates have been incubating for 24 hours at body temperature to see just how much bacteria they've picked up. Let's scoop them up. Ooh. They're all kind of yummy, aren't they? Oh, man, this stuff is rank. Yep. To discover M5's level of hygiene, the guys count the number of bacteria colonies on each sample. Uh, the bathroom number two looks like a bloody horror show. I think I dropped it right in someone's drop of wee or something. Shop floor number two, uh, 132. Lunch table number two? Yeah. 26 colonies. Adam's like a kid with a new chemistry set. I love having bacteriological test stuff. Come to think of it, Adam is a kid with a new chemistry set. Later on, I want to uh, I want to lick one of these and get a dog to lick one and see if my mouth is cleaner than a dog's mouth. How are you going to feel if it turns out your mouth is dirtier than a dog's? That's fine. It's served me just fine until now. There's no reason to freak out. Adam's busting to check the results of the toilet seat myth. And it's a eureka moment. Whoa! There is no, almost no bacteria on the toilet seat. That is so cool. We have proven a myth. Uh, looking at our samples just briefly from all over Mythbusters, your toilet seat seems to be the most bacteria free. Well, you know, that doesn't really surprise me a whole lot because we're testing the floor, you know? But like, people don't rub their bare bottoms on your floor all the time. I mean, you know, I'm thinking <laughs> this is everyone in the company. His butt has sat where I put this petri dish. If cleanliness is next to godliness, <laughs> then heaven is a Mythbusters toilet seat. Toilet humor aside, what did the floor test show? On all of these figures, there's sometimes a very wide variability between two spots we chose that were side by side. I mean, we might not end up testing the five second rule here. We might, we might end up testing where you happen to drop the piece of food. What we need to do is to start with a sterile surface and evenly contaminate it so that we have an even playing field and that will boil it down to the time, not the actual surface or what's on it. Right, so yeah, cleanly and not, uh, cleanly bacterial inoculant. <coughs> Right, that sounds great. I see some pans. Well, we have some tiles. Final we, floor tiles. We have beef broth. Ooh. And we have some pans. That's five days now? They smell really, really bad. Yeah, I know. Um, let's, uh, let's get them out, hang them up, and dry them off and see if we can use them today. Jamie punches out plastic templates which will ensure sample sizes are consistent. While they're sterilizing in the microwave, Adam gloves up. Coming up, Mythbusters takes Microbiology 101. Adam has to behave like this. It's in his contract. But whatever you do, don't do this at home. To test the five second rule, they'll use a wet food, a dry food, and an evenly contaminated floor tile. It's science! Samples of wet pastrami and dry crackers are exposed for two seconds and six seconds. In other words, for less than and more than five seconds. They also do a control on samples that don't touch the floor at all, in case they are already coated with bacteria. Control number two. I know I love building big things and blowing stuff up, but this is also super, super fun. Okay, fishing out a new one. He doesn't care. And go. And the bulk of our Mythbusters bacteriology test is done. So this is supposed to be our definitive test of the five second rule. What do you think is actually going to happen? I don't think there's going to be any significant difference. I tend to agree with you that there's not going to be a significant difference between two seconds and six seconds. But um, shall we start counting? The results show that all the food did pick up bacteria from the floor top. 21. 
for cracker two seconds. But the wet pastrami picked up more than the dry crackers. 322 for meat six seconds. On the crucial question of time, the results were less than definitive, with no conclusive distinctions between the two second and the six second samples. So does that mean that it's better to eat crackers that have been dropped on the floor than pastrami that's been dropped on the floor? Well, not exactly, but it does mean that if there is something harmful there on the floor, the odds are the pastrami is more likely to pick it up. But what about the five second rule? Was there a difference between the samples dropped for two seconds and the samples dropped for six seconds? Well, I don't think the results were all that conclusive, but as far as I can tell, time didn't seem to be a factor because uh, all the samples seemed to show about the same amount of contamination no matter how long they sat on the floor. But I'm not ready to put this one to rest just yet. I think we have one more test to do. It's not really about the food and it's not really about the floor, it's about the time. And I'd like to eliminate the food and try applying our contact plates directly to our inoculated floor surface for the correct periods of time, two seconds, six seconds, and see if there's any difference in how much bacteria they pick up. I think that makes sense. It's removing all the other variables. The five second rule has been around a long time and it's not giving up without a fight. By leaving out the food in this final test, they eliminate every variable, except the crucial one, time. Well, in another 24 hours, we're gonna know the answer to the age old question of the five second rule. Load me up. 24 hours later, it's time to count the colonies. If there's any truth to the five second rule, the two second plates should have far less bacteria than the six second ones. Whoa. Wow, that's uh, Dude. Two second exposure is huge. The colony count is so massive as to be uncountable, but it looks identical for both. There's no discernible difference between the samples, regardless of how long they spent on the floor. This is really the definitive test for this myth. We could test a million different foods and get a million different results, but right here, eliminating all other factors purely on time, a two second exposure as opposed to a six second exposure, there's no difference. They're almost identical, or they are identical. Yeah. So that's an excellent result. The final bell has tolled, and this myth looks out for the count. Five second rule, what's the verdict? Well, I, I think we were both pretty clear on what the results would be, and it took a little while, but we got it. it. There's absolutely no correlation between how much bacteria food picks up and how much time it has spent on the floor. In fact, it seemed like it was all about everything else but the time. It was how moist the food was, the surface geometry of the food, uh, what was on the floor and how contaminated it was, and all those kinds of things, yeah. but it wasn't about the time. We got to figure out a bunch of other cool stuff, like uh, the toilet seat's the cleanest place in your shop. And that your mouth's dirtier than a dog's. And speaking of which, are you going to let your kids eat off the floor? Uh, well, I'm raising them off of your life story that you told me. I, I figure if they eat off the floor until they're 8 or 10, they'll have a super hardy constitution. Yeah, right. Well, uh, the myth is busted one way or another. It's totally busted. Bada bing, bada boom.